be able to fall asleep like that and even sleep talk the entire time? You scared Paimon half to death! Did I say anything I shouldn't have? No, but you kept mumbling things along the lines of, Pyron, go take my grilled fish and put down the Adeptus Temptation now! <laughs> Paimon talked with Sijuin the entire time you were asleep. She seems like she's just a sincere nurse and Paimon didn't notice anything unusual in the room. Are you sure we're not going off track with the infirmary? Are we really off track, though? There are so few weird things about that place. That movable hatch on the ground, as well as the questions seem to be asking worrying. And also, were they really talking about their meds before we walked in? Oh, and was Levine and Julia his argument genuine, or were they just putting on a show? Paimon, hear me out. Whoa, you really are super thorough. All those tiny little suspicious things that Paimon didn't even pick up on. We've got to get the info to Linny. Not suspicious at all. <laughs> Did you two run into any trouble over the past few days? No, we just worked our shifts according to the schedule. Nothing weird happened. Hmm, that's good. That means you didn't raise any suspicions when you infiltrated the infirmary. We've taken a look at the slip you've sent. Fremine successfully left the grounds via the pipes two days ago. And, as of last night, Lynette has also infiltrated the infirmary after faking an illness. Wait, why is she getting involved as well? You already went above and beyond when you scoped out the infirmary. To put it more bluntly, even if we were to view that as something you did in exchange for Fremenet's help, you've already done more than enough. Infiltrating a guarded stronghold is a different kind of job from a one-off investigation. We want to avoid using the same faces over and over, and reduce the amount of suspicion that will fall on any given person. Lynette also felt like you have already taken the first step for us, so she should be the one to finish the job. So that's what Lynette thinks. Oh, Paimon hopes everything's going well for her. Yeah. Then, let's go check on Lynette before Fremenet returns. If everything went well, then she should be wrapping up her investigation right about now. Is now really a good time to go over? According to my observations, Sijuin always spends around half an hour away from the infirmary right before lunch. Lynette knows this as well, so this should be a good time to meet up with her. Oh yeah, we heard about that too. Also, I'm her brother, remember? It's only natural for an older brother to care about his younger sister's well-being. Okay, then let's head over right away! <laughs> Lynette should be here right now. Huh. Strange. Lynette? Sijuin isn't here, but why isn't Lynette here? Could she have found the lead? 
No, Lynette rarely deviates from the plan. We agreed that if she were to make changes on the fly, she'd find a way to let me know. Unless... Let's see if there are any clues around here. We can look while we wait for her. Who knows? Maybe she'll be back soon. Okay. None of the beds have any signs of having been slept in, except that one over there. One of these beds always looks so huge. That's the one Lynette must have used, right? You said she was pretending to be sick. Mm-hmm. She would have said her migraine was having a particularly bad flare-up. Generally speaking, the head nurse would then ask her to lie down and rest while she left to retrieve the medication. But this, this bed is still in me. Which means either the head nurse didn't return the entire time from when Lynette laid down up until she left the bed, or the nurse intentionally left it this way. Oh no, that's not a good sign. <sighs> there are some books here and a few files. They all look like medical records. Hmm. Advanced nursing, how to raise the spirit of your patients, a quick guide to the psychology of emotions, and the meaning of laughter. These sure are some interesting books. Who knew Sijuin would be interested in these kinds of things? She even has books on understanding people's motivations and feelings. Hmm. Is it because she's a melazine? Or does she have a need to understand her patient's emotional state? Hmm. Seems quite normal to me. These are skills that would come in handy for a nurse from time to time. What do you know? Here's the hat. How did she see that from the bed? Unless she was like here, and they were, she was facing this way and not the other way. <laughs> ah! This is it! We saw it before! Wait, this thing? It doesn't look like it's been disguised that well. The space behind it is empty. From its size, I don't think it's an entrance that is meant to be taken apart. There's probably a mechanism around here somewhere. Could Lynette have tried to get inside? But if that's the case, she would have contacted me for sure. Why does it look like it's nailed down? Hmm. Let's look around here for some more clues. Don't panic, just take another look. Are you telling yourself that? The look on Linny's face, he's definitely beginning to panic. Don't panic, he probably said that subconsciously more for himself than he out. <laughs> hey, you guys, there's a slip of paper over here! A slip of paper? It's right over here, and there's a bunch written on it too. It reads... Out of respect for your usual practices, I'll use a piece of paper or card as the medium to pass on my message. You may consider this as me giving you my best regards. Huh? This is... I did not hear him say that. Is... is that all? <laughs> is there anything on the back? The back? Ah, this... this is... What? What? Show me. Now! <laughs> what? What is it? That, that look on your face! Paimon's reading it now! Would you care to guess where Miss Lynette of the Fatui could be right now? No! Could she have... Is she already... Riley, Did he deliberately leave the infirmary unguarded to use it as bait? Wait, you mean... He was aware of our goals from the very beginning? But why? 
We didn't run into any trouble last time, and he also never reached out to us since. Why would he choose to act during our second infiltration attempt instead of the first? Yes, that is a crucial question. Risley, he doesn't do anything without a clear goal or reason. So this means he had no concerns about your activities from the very beginning. You are not from the same camp as us. You were sent down here by Nervilet, so you have no conflict of interest with Risley. We're a completely different story, though. Why did he only go after Lynette? I'd like to know that, too. Why did he only go after her? <sighs> Don't panic. Just think everything over. I have to stay calm. This is not like what happened last time. The situation's different now. <laughs> Wait, you're right. Wait, but that means... The fact that Fremine was able to leave the grounds... Could Risley have let him go as well? What? What does he gain by letting Fremine leave like that? I get it now. He deliberately made them both disappear. <sighs> so he's challenging me and trying to provoke me, I'm sure of it. Ah! <sighs> We never should have sent out Fremine. We had to go through all that trouble to find an opening to sneak him around the guards and into the pipe, and we even thought luck was on our side. If Risley let him leave on purpose, then he's probably in a terrible spot now as well. Lenny's getting more and more panicked. We have to calm him down. That's the worst thing you can say in life. Lenny, calm down. From personal experience. Don't be like this, Linny. Fremenay wouldn't have left if we hadn't told you about Child. That was our fault. No. I'm the leader of this operation, and I'm the one responsible for this team. I was the one who failed to protect them. I'll go talk to Risley. Hey, don't be reckless! Traveler, please, talk some sense into him! I simply cannot allow Lynette to be abducted again. I don't know, I kind of want to go as well. I want to ask too. I have to go. I'll find a way to get them back. He's rushed out the door! After him! There's a door? Hmm. Where are you hiding? Is she smiling? Right. I feel like we still have some room to make changes on these details. It's not impossible, but it'll require extensive testing. Is that so? Very well. Then please be mindful of the time. Huh? Is someone? Pack everything up. Whoever's outside is eavesdropping. They'll probably come in once we stop talking. Are you okay? Ah, oh, these two. As expected, they've already found this place. Oh, they are quite sharp. What a delightful turn of events. I like smart people, but I also like playing dumb. I like the feeling of being trusted. Oh my! What's wrong, little one? There's no need to panic. Take a deep breath before you begin. Being able to read human expressions is quite the useful skill. Lenny! Wait! It's no Don't use, we have to catch up to him! Lenny! <laughs> <laughs> He's already out of sight! How is he so fast? Let's go head him off at Risley's office! Whoa, where is that? I remember all these places.
come out and face me, Risley! Hmm. Aren't we at an administrative office space? Why don't you at least try to follow even a couple rules from the Fortress's indoor management regulations? What did you do to my sister? I ran into the young miss at the infirmary. I'd heard that she was suffering from quite the migraine, so I decided to invite her over for a cup of tea. I do have some teas in my collection that can work wonders against such an illness. Stop joking around! Where did you take my siblings? I have also heard that your performances are quite the spectacle. Miss Lynette would sometimes enter a box filled with water, only to emerge the next second from another place altogether. Maybe she'll appear behind you right now if you were to turn your head. Is he trying to trick me into turning my head? No, he's probably not looking to attack me right now. All of the hostages are in his hands, and he's even in the mood for small talk. That means Lynette is probably still alive. You knew we were investigating the infirmary from the start, so you deliberately aroused the Traveler's suspicions and baited us into continuing our investigation, just so that you'd be able to kidnap Lynette. <sighs> but why? As for Fremini... No, you probably didn't even interfere with Child's escape. You let him go, so you could purge the Fatui members that we had planted into your ranks. There was no need to do so. The Fortress of Meripeed is a pretty pleasant place. Most people enjoy their lives here. The only ones who act differently are those with personal agendas. It was quite easy to identify your colleagues. You removed our original members and spread the news of Child's escape so Father would assign our team to come down and investigate. Fremenet has also fallen into your hands, right? If you're oh so omnipotent and so in control, why would you need hostages? One correction. Lynette is in my hands right now, but Fremenet is not. He's not? What do you really want? Lady! Oh, wonderful. Everyone is here, so I'll only need to say this once. Thank you so much for cooperating with me. Where are Lynette and Fremenet? I'm eager and to the point, I see. Alas, only Miss Lynette is currently having a cup of the Fortress's finest tea. Although, as per your original plan, Mr. Fremenet should also have returned to the Fortress by now. But he has neither shown up within my gates, nor has he been taken into any kind of custody. So, where do you think he may be right now? Wait, you can't mean... You locked him outside in the sea? I closed the Fortress's gate to the outside world. That's all. Fremenet's a star diver, so he should be fine, right? No, we're still here, so he definitely try to find a way to come back for us. So we can't assume he might have made a break for the surface. But why would I do this, you may be asking. To have an audience with you, of course. My intel tells me that Mr. Linney is a great magician, so it's only natural for me to want to have some cards of my own when it comes to negotiating. Besides, I do recall you mentioning to Miss Lynette that you've always wanted to have a face-to-face -face meeting with the Lord of the Fortress of Meripede, regardless of whether it was in a personal or a professional capacity. Well, you got your wish. So, you've been keeping tabs on us before we even set foot in the Fortress. Some of my folks just happen to hear a thing or two, that's all. In any case, I will be straight with you. I was willing to play dumb and turn a blind eye, so we had a pleasant few days playing games together here. But once you started focusing on the Forbidden Zone, all of that changed. Mr. Linney, the cards are stacked against you right now. Miss Lynette is in my hands, and Mr. Fremenet is still slowly being pickled out there in the brine. You know just as well as I that he cannot last out there forever. You need do but one thing to guarantee their safety. I would like you to contact your superior, and ideally invite her over for a cup of tea with me. You want to see Father? <laughs> but why should she bother giving you an audience? Well, if she cares for the well-being of her dearest children, she should have plenty of motivation to join me for a parent's evening. I've heard that the bonds between the members of the House of the Hearth are like the bonds of family. I don't see why she would refuse. Why did you think Father sent us to handle the Fortress of Meripede? 
This place is basically a no man's land. It wouldn't be fitting for anyone as important as a harbinger like Father to come here in person. Oh, I see. So it's because she doesn't care for my place here. That's such a shame. After all, I've amassed quite the tea collection. I was looking forward to sharing it with her. Both Monsieur Nervillette and Lady Farina have already received many samples as gifts. Was this the extent of your master plan to get to Father? No matter how much pressure you may put on me, I won't allow you to use us to blackmail her. You people really are difficult to get along with. All I'm asking for is a face-to-face -face conversation. Does she truly have no interest in the Fortress's secret? Mr. Linney, you have one last chance to invite your father here. If you refuse... <sighs> Why do you have to do this? Instead of asking why I'm doing this, why don't you try to see things from my perspective for a second? From the very beginning, the Fatui has been actively infiltrating my fortress. I gave you a warning by cutting off the first few operatives I found, but that only caused you to double down. Had you given up on the fortress then and there, I'd have no reason to want to talk. Mr. Fremenet left the fortress on his own and Miss Lynette tried to pry out my secrets right in front of me. No matter how you look at it, the responsibility for this falls on you. I... I shouldn't ask Father to do anything because of us. Six. Five. Wait, I... Two. One. Time's up. It really is a shame, Miss Lenny. Negotiations have broken down. Please leave, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for my afternoon tea. <laughs> Please wait. Can we really not talk about this some more? Yeah, listen to the traveler. If you can't talk to Lenny, can you at least talk to us? You do realize that I'm only letting you go because of Nervalette, yes? You are here helping him out, and I've already done my best to stay out of your way. But that doesn't mean you can just do whatever you want. The fortress may be small and remote, but it still has its own set of laws. Please spare from an alienet. Hmm. Then how about this? Those who are capable deserve respect. You've spent quite some time investigating my home turf by now, so why don't you tell me a thing or two about what you found, hmm? I'll ask you three questions. Answer all of them correctly, and I'll agree to your request. Question one. Regarding the hidden rules of the production zone, what is the truth behind the one about not being allowed to work for three days in a row? What is the truth behind the one about not being allowed? Huh? I can't believe he's asking about the hidden rules. If I recall correctly, if you keep working without any rest during lunch hour on the third day, you will find a portion of strained meat in your well fellow meal. Meal. <laughs> We already run a thorough investigation on this. Let's see if I can remember all the clues. I should be able to find an answer if I can piece everything together. Oh boy. Regarding the hidden rules, what is the truth behind the one about not being out? What happens? Okay. Who will see it if you keep working continuously? I've been told that the infirmary is always empty for the half hour just before lunch. But what could Sijuin be doing during that time? The Fanta promoter has been struggling because he doesn't recognize the real value of coupons. Meanwhile, the Duke believes that only idiots who don't understand the value of coupons would spend them on Fanta. You often see Miss Sijuin observing the prisoners at work near the production zone. Seems like she can perceive the general state of a person's health just by looking at them. Fonta's internal reports suggest that they're starting a new trial of an unnamed and unpackaged product. But the product has to undergo a trial because even Fonta's own employees have a lot of reservations about it. The research notes said that the Melusine race perceives the world very differently from humans. 
Because of that, the Melazines have also developed a sense of aesthetics that appear rather strange and alien to humans. According to Collins, the Pancration Tournament only took place because the Fanta Company sponsored it. <sighs> the company must want to return on their investment as well. The Fanta promoter has been... I've been told that the infirmary is always empty for the half hour just before... Under what circumstances does a strange meat appear? The research notes said that the Melusine race perceives the world very differently from humans. According to Collins, the Pancration Tournament only took place because the Fanta Company... Fanta's internal reports suggest that they're starting a new trial of an unnamed and unpackaged product. But... The product has to undergo a trial because even Fanta's own employees have a lot of reservations about it. The Fanta promoter has been struggling because he doesn't recognize the root. Okay, um, Fanta's internal report suggests that there's. Why does the strange meat appear the way it does? Uh. According to Collins, the Pancration Tournament only took place because the Fanta Company sponsored it. <sighs> the company must want to return on their investment as well. I have no idea. I don't remember getting any clues for that. <laughs> Other than that, it's just hinted. And now that's here. The research notes said that the Melusine race perceives the world very differently from humans. Because of that, the Melusines have also developed a sense of aesthetics. Okay. The Fanta promoter has been struggling because he doesn't recognize the real value of coupons. Meanwhile, the Duke believes... We often see Miss Sijuin observing the prisoners at work near the production zone. Well, that's the one I chose, but I guess that Seems was the like wrong she one. Fanta's internal report suggests that they're starting a new trial of an unnamed and unpackaged product. But, according to Collins, the Pancration Tournament only took place okay, because the Fanta... I don't understand these. The Fanta promoter has been <laughs> struggling because he doesn't recognize the real value of coupons. Meanwhile... The Duke believes that only idiots who don't understand the value of coupons would spend them on Fanta. Fanta's internal report suggests that they're starting a new trial of an unnamed... We often see Miss Sijuin observing the prisoners at work near... I've been told that the infirmary is always empty for the half hour just before lunch. What could Sijuin be doing during- <laughs> This is the one I keep getting wrong. But none of these sound make any sense in my opinion. According to Collins, the Pancreation- Well, I chose the other one and you're telling me it's wrong! That's the one I chose! Zone. <laughs> People are not supposed to work three days in a row, and if they do, they'll get strange meat in their welfare meal. At first we thought this strange meat must have something to do with the people who disappeared, but in reality, they were all prepared by Sijuin, the head nurse. She often visits the production zone to observe the workers' health and makes a note of anyone who has worn themselves out after three full days of work. I have her sense of duty as the head nurse, as well as her genuine concern for the workers' health, Sijuin visits the cafeteria right before lunch, and cooks an extra dish for those who can use the stamina boost. Sijuin has only the best intentions with her surprise gift, and doesn't want anyone to find out about what she does. However, unfortunately, Melusines as a race perceive the world differently from humans, 
aliens and their sense of aesthetics is even more alien to us. The recipients of her lovingly prepared special meals cannot taste the care within and usually just freak out. Are we on the right track? <laughs> Not bad. You've uncovered Si Juin's secret and even guessed her intentions correctly as well. It's nice to know that her efforts have not gone unacknowledged. All right, now for my next question. There are also some hidden rules in the Pancration Ring, including the one that you're not allowed to support both sides of a fight. Why is that? the package containing the strange blood cloud colored fluid. I've been told that the infirmary is always empty for the half hour just before lunch. But what could Sejuin be doing during that time? Fonta's internal reports suggest that they're starting a new trial of an unnamed and unpackaged product. Why does the strange blood colored fluid look the way that? Oh. We often Wait. see Miss no. Jean no. no. not that one. The Fanta promoter has been struggling because he doesn't recognize the real value of coupons. Meanwhile, the Duke believes that only idiot. The research notes said that the Melusine race proceeded. According to Collins, the Pancreation tournament only took place because the Fanta company sponsored it. Huh. The company must want to return on their investment as well. The Fanta promoter has been struggling because he... Why do only those who buy tickets to support both fighters receive the package? The research note said that the Melusine race perceives the world very different. According to Collins, the Pancreation tournament only took place because the Fanta Cup. According to Collins, the Pancreation Tournament only took place because the Fanta Company sponsored it. Fanta's internal reports suggest that they're starting a new trial of an unnamed and unpackaged product. The research notes said that the Melusine rate... The Fanta promoter has been struggling because he... Yes! <laughs> ah, Paimon gets this rule too now, so there really was nothing to be afraid of. That hidden rule of the Pancration Ring is about how, um, people are not supposed to bet on both boxers at the same time. And if they do, they'll receive a package containing a strange blood-colored liquid. People get scared when they see it because they've subconsciously begun to associate it with the missing boxer. But really, it's just a bottle of the latest yet to be named and packaged new Fonta trial product. A blood red drink. It's no wonder even Fonta's own staff were questioning the company's decision making. The company, facing backlash from its own staff, decided to try to trial the product on a smaller scale to see how it might be received by customers. They came to the Fortress of Meropi and offered to sponsor the Pancration Tournament so they could push their new product. But the Duke completely refused to even entertain the idea. The Duke, knowing how valuable coupons are in the Fortress, knew that only total idiots who didn't understand their true value would bother buying a Fanta product here. And so, only those who proved their stupidity by being dumb enough to bet on two opposing sides of the same match were selected to receive the drinks. I acknowledge the effort you've put into bringing the truth of this mystery to light. Although, based on your description, that Fanta promoter is a bit too careless with his words. I may just reconsider my collaboration with the company. <laughs> Alright, and here's the final question. What's the secret behind our head nurse and all of her patients in the infirmary? 
We haven't collected enough info to answer that question. Stop your cruel and pointless games, Risley! You know that we haven't finished our investigation, so there's no way we can answer the last question! The thought of sparing Lynette and Fremen never even crossed your mind! Lenny! You'll pay for this! <laughs> yeah. Oh, close one. I owe you, Siege Wing. That was a fantastic shot. There was nothing, Your Grace. Why don't we get an animation for this? Siege Wing? Though this gun may look like a toy, it's actually fully functional, as I just demonstrated. Did she just, like, hit him with, like, a shot? Wing. Are you as accomplished in all this? <sighs> Not at all. I am merely a resident of the fortress, and thus protecting it is my duty. When Monsieur Nervulet asked me to come here, he told me that my job would be to take care of the well-being of everyone here. I am merely discharging my duties. But if you mean what you just said, then isn't Linny someone you should be looking after as well? Isn't he a resident here just like the rest of us? If you're close to Nervulet, why not learn a thing or two about virtue from him? <laughs> But I really am just doing what Monsieur Nervulet told me to do. Everything I did, I've done to protect them. Had I not, they would be in far more dire straits right now. His Grace knows it too, right? Your Grace? Mind proving my innocence to them? <sighs> my dear Siege Wayne, whatever shall I do with you? Would it have killed you to just wait another minute or two? Well, it's nearly time after all. <sighs> the way you do things can be truly frustrating sometimes, Your Grace. I figured I should try to talk some sense into you. What are you talking about? What kind? Take me if you want, but let them go. Mm hmm how touching. Can you just give me one more minute? Don't be like that, Your Grace. All right, everyone, calm down. Two more visitors will be arriving any time now. I'll go get a cup of tea. Miss Sijuin, I leave Miss Lynette in your care. You... What are you doing? I believe I hear footsteps. A familiar figure first into the room. Some space, please. No. I'm expecting her. <laughs> ah, Miss Clorand. My door. <laughs> Fremenay to Fremenay. What's going on? What is Clarin doing here? Work. I'm sorry about shooting you, Mr. Lenny. The tranquilizing effect will begin to wear off soon. Please take it easy in the meantime, though. What happened to Fremenay? Wasn't he diving just outside of the fortress? Why is he looking like... like this? These symptoms. It can't be. A flushed face. An accelerated pulse. He must have consumed primordial seawater. What did you say? Please, make some space. We'll need to give Mr. Fremen a more thorough checkup. Your Grace, I'll leave the rest to you. I'll talk to Cloran while you get Fremen to where he needs to be. Everything else can wait. What's that look on your face? I thought I made good time on the way back. Oh, I'm just admiring your punctuality. Had you arrived just a few minutes later, Sijuin may have been forced to shoot Mr. Linny again. How's the situation out there? The water has changed. It's pretty much as expected. The concentration of primordial seawater has increased significantly. I was only out there a short time, so it wasn't too bad. But if one were to stay for any significant amount of time... Well, you can see how that boy is doing. Where was he when you found him? The abandoned zone at the end of the pipes. A good distance into the water. Closer than I thought. 
He must have recognized it early on and tried desperately to swim back. Locking the door was necessary. I don't think we could have saved two. Well, I did try to convince them that I had my reasons. Never seems to work, though. It would probably work on Nuvulet. He has a knack for picking out who had good intentions, even when the outcomes were all terrible. Uh, it's a bad sign if you're having to plead your case to Nuvulet. Want some tea? Mm, not particularly. If you want to drink some that badly, just say so. Fine, I'd like to get some tea. Want me to get you a cup too, since I've already made it? He told you he's a bad hatter. <laughs> Just <a> hat. <laughs> uh, might as well then, I suppose. Actually, do you have a towel? I would like to dry my hair. Check her out. Ugh, the names are always in the way. Checking out her hair. Oops. <laughs> Does Fremini actually come from Fontaine, though? I was like, I heard some of his voice lines, um, you know, before the new update for this. Um, I don't know, it made it seem like he came from someplace else. Not from Fontaine. <sighs> Lenny's expression looks disgusted. It seems like he's rather not... Rather not have seen to touch Fermine. Still, he didn't stop her since it's obvious that Fermine does require urgent medical care. Sigrun's examining Fermine carefully. She doesn't look too upset, which is a good sign. I hope Fermine will be okay. How is he? These symptoms are probably caused by an acute ingestion of a large amount of primordial seawater. Still, his condition is not critical. Of course, it would be best if he stayed for further observation. Well, let's leave him here for now, and move him to the infirmary once he's recovered a bit more. Uh, sorry, I am aware that the infirmary may not be your favorite place in the world at the moment. We do only have a single clinic in the fortress, however. Mm -hmm. Why would he ingest a large amount of primordial seawater after leaving the fortress? How could that possibly happen? Please, look after Mr. Fremenet for the moment. I'll go fetch some medicine and a respirator. Oh, I'll bring Miss Lynette back with me. Where is she? How is she right now? Oh, she just took a nap in an empty room after I tranquilized her. If my calculations are correct, she should also be waking up right around now. You might not believe me, but His Grace and I actually made some snacks and tea for her. Lenny has finally begun to stop tensing the muscles on his face. It seems that he trusts what Sigrun just said. Sigrun, Sigrun. <laughs> Lenny, are you okay? I'll be fine. They're all here now. Don't worry about me. Are you sure? You don't look alright. My hands and feet are still a bit weak, but that's probably just the residual effects of the tranquilizer shot. I'm back, everyone. Lenny! Oh, Traveler, Paimon, you're here too. Remine? Is he... He'll be fine. But for now, please help me lift him up. <gasps> His breathing's beginning to slow down. Give me a hand and help me get him to the infirmary. Yeah, I'll take him from this side. Lynette? Together? On it. Traveler, you seem pretty worried about him. Want to come with us? Very well. The Duke and Clarinda are gone. Yeah, I know they left. They probably 
probably went to get some tea. <sighs> the Duke will explain the truth in just a bit. Miss Florian will need a break, since she only just returned from rescuing Fremine out of the sea. Kalun saved Fremine from the sea. Just what happened there? She's an Oceanid! <gasps> Although I know in this game all Oceanids seem to have blue hair and blue watery eyes. Where are you taking me? He's awake. Fremine, how do you feel? Uh, Lenny... Lynette... We're all here. Uh, where... am I? The infirmary, at the Fortress of Meripede, Mr. Fremine. And you are no longer in any danger. How do you feel? Don't push yourself if you're not feeling up to it. Uh, traveler, Paimon, it's been so long. Oh, uh, the sea. Uh, there's something wrong with the seawater. Shh, it's okay. We can talk about it after you've recovered. No, listen to me. This is really serious. There's primordial seawater mixed into the regular seawater. I don't know why it's there, but no one should touch it. What happened after you snuck into the pipes? Pipes... Uh... Right, the pipes. It's all coming back to me now. I'm in. Hmm. Seems like this pipe hasn't been used in a long time. It looks abandoned. Hmm. Where could Master Child be? Hmm. 
Ooh, this glider actually looks pretty good on him. mechanism looks like it's been tampered with. Could he have done it? Getting stuck on something. Seems like I'll have to avoid those obstacles while I turn it. Goofed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ah. I thought maybe it was supposed to be that one, but no, that was from the start. Okay. Jeez. I hope I was supposed to go down here. <laughs> oh. This is where the water starts. Okay. Master Child probably dived into the water. I'll go take a look as well. Vegetation here is a bit more sparse. These traces aren't natural. A person must have left them, and recently. I should be going in the right direction. Oh, there are traces here too. I need to keep going. Huh? The traces are gone. But I don't see where he could have gone from here. Wait, what the? 
My heart is racing, and it's getting harder and harder to breathe. What's going on? No good. I have to get back. They still don't know anything about what's going on. If I turn back right now, I should still be able to make it. Jeez, he's losing. I'm trying to go as fast as I can, man. <laughs> I can't die here. This is, this is bad. I'm feeling worse and worse, and I'm still underwater. I. I have to push. Hmm. So, in other words, the trail you were following vanished, and you had no idea where Master Child could have gone. But there was also no obvious place for him to have disappeared to. Mm-hmm. That's right. I tried my best to swim back, but I had already put some distance between myself and the fortress, and I just couldn't find the strength to keep going. I probably passed out some time after that, and... You know the rest. Miss Clarand brought you back, but we also don't know why she just suddenly appeared at the fortress, or why she went out to save you. Miss Clarand, you say? I must go thank her in person. You're still too weak, Remine. You can go after you've had some more rest. Miss Lynette is right. I believe Miss Clarand will stay here as a guest for another few days, so there's no need to hurry. Guest? Then I can assume Risley was the one who invited her to come down here? You should ask His Grace about that. He'll be able to explain better than me. Got it. I'll go talk to him. Yeah. It's about time he actually told us what's going on. Wanna come with us, Lenny? Uh... No. Please go on without me. I don't want to leave just yet. Lenny... The logical part of my brain is aware that we're safe right now, but I still can't bring myself to leave. Both of you are just in danger. Mm. Understood. Then let's just sit together for a while. In that case, I'll leave the infirmary to you. The Traveler and I are going to head out for now. As long as you stay in here, I don't think you'll be disturbed. Thank you. I take it Mr. Fremenet's condition has stabilized? Of course. I wouldn't have left the infirmary otherwise. I've been expecting those two, but might I inquire as to the purpose of your visit, Miss Sujuin? I wanted to check up on Miss Clarion. How are you feeling? Mostly fine, I think. If you don't mind, 
I'd like to perform another quick physical exam. It'll just take a few minutes. All right. Thank you for looking out for me. I'll take my leave for now, then. Well, want to explain yourself, Risley? Yeah. <laughs> of course. But I'm not partial to the word choice of explain. How about enlighten? Well, please enlighten us as much as you'd like. <laughs> Where should I begin? How about you start by asking me any questions you have? You can start with whichever one you'd like to get answered the most. Hmm. Then Paimon will begin. Did you know about Lenny's goals from the very beginning? Hmm, no. I just knew they were Fatui operatives sent to the fortress by the Knave. As for their specific goals, I only figured those out as you made progress on your investigation. You managed to monitor and stay ahead of them even though you didn't know what they were trying to do? They came here with ulterior motives. I'm quite adept at discerning what that kind of behavior signals. Why didn't you stop them? Initially, I thought their goal was just to investigate Child's disappearance. Linny suggested that I had deliberately let him escape, but in truth, I didn't really do anything special to help or hinder him while he was here. Everything he did, from finding helpers to leaving this place, he did on his own. Of course, it's inevitable that the Knave would make a big deal out of her fellow Harbinger's unexplained disappearance. I'm also quite curious about where that Harbinger went, so I figured I might as well let the Fatui do their own investigative work. All I care about is the answer. So you were hoping Lenny's group would just do your work for you? You make it sound like that's a bad thing. Unfortunately, things didn't go as planned. I assume that Fremenet has told you already, the ratio of primordial seawater around the fortress of Meripede is on the rise. The Forbidden Zone has always been Linny's target, and you got roped into that investigation after running into him. I began to intervene out of concern for your safety, and also to prevent the fortress from becoming entangled in more irksome matters. Are the rumors true that you're also a former criminal? Now why would you put it like that? Isn't staying here all day and serving as the manager of the fortress a kind of sentence unto itself? Another form of prison? I just happen to have some support from the rest of the inmates. That's all. Oh, right! But I wanted to ask, who invited Clarence down here? Me, of course. I paid her good Mora to come down to the fortress for some field work. As a champion duelist, Miss Clarence could be considered to be an independent party. I needed to find an exceptionally capable person to help me get through the impending crisis. And saving Fremenet was part of that crisis? You can think of it like that, yes. Credit where credit is due, that boy is quite adept at diving. Had conditions not been as hostile as they were, he probably would have found the missing Harbinger already. So the Forbidden Zone really exists? What's inside of it? That's not something you should be asking after. Nevelet only asked you to investigate Child's whereabouts. All I need to prove to you is that the Forbidden Zone had nothing to do with the Harbinger's disappearance. That should be clear now that you've spoken to Fremen. But we've already uncovered that there's something wrong with the infirmary. And we've answered a bunch of questions that you threw at us. Isn't it about time that you answer our last question in return? You make a compelling case. Do you really want to know the answer that badly? Yeah, Paimon really wants to know. <laughs> Even if the truth may not be pleasant? Yes. Follow me. Seems you've forgotten just what kind of place the Fortress of Meripede is. <sighs> Stand on the central plate. Wait, is there a secret mechanism or... Whoa! So, 
This is the Forbidden Zone? Honestly, for a place so well hidden, Paimon sure doesn't see anything special. And that is... What a huge door! There are three such isolation gates in total. Generally speaking, I'm the only one who's allowed to go inside. Hence the name Forbidden Zone. Am I correct to assume you're going to run on back and tell your little Fatui friends everything? Well, I... My mom wasn't thinking of keeping anything from them. <laughs> well, I'd advise you wait until you've seen the whole truth of this place for yourself before deciding whether or not to tell them. Stand back. Whoa! They all just went up one by one! What's that in the middle of the room? Go on, have a look. Oh no, I see some purple smoke. <laughs> This room is really empty with nothing in here, which is quite strange on its own. There's also a device smack dab in the middle of the room, which looks like some kind of massive sluice gate. I've been interested in what lies beyond that gate ever since I assumed leadership of the Fortress of Meripede. Of course, it would be unwise to recklessly open it. But it'd also be risky and negligent to simply ignore any potential danger that could be behind it. The readings on that dashboard have not budged since the day when I first laid eyes on this place. But over the past year, the needle has crept upwards from its original position, likely because some parameter it's been tracking has changed, if only infinitesimally. Normally I would have ignored it, but I happen to have some free time when I noticed it, so I investigated. Any guesses what the reading could be tracking? The water pressure? Very reasonable guesses. I've considered both of those as well. Unfortunately, our dashboard is tracking something less ordinary. The temperature should vary with weather and climate changes, so for something that rarely shifts, the water pressure is more likely. We ran a few tests to increase the pressure from the outside, but the readings didn't change at all. Later on, a few more possibilities occurred to me, such as a potential connection with the primordial sea. I began to make a few preparations based on that hypothesis. Over the past few days, the needle has moved again. With that, and the symptoms that Fremenet displayed after leaving the fortress, I can now confidently conclude that the readings represent the concentration of primordial seawater in the seawater nearby. The concentration of... primordial seawater? But we're already under the sea! And that is precisely the problem. We're at the bottom of the sea, and now we're surrounded by toxic seawater. Somehow, primordial seawater got mixed in, and the concentration is steadily rising. Primordial seawater is continually leaking into the sea? Yes. That's very likely. But forget about the two of us. Not even Novelette knows where the primordial sea could be, much less where we could find a plug of leak. Oh. Oh! Seems like you've figured it out. I believe the primordial sea lies directly beneath this sluice gate. For some reason, the primordial seawater levels have risen significantly, and it's now very close to us. The indicators are now red. Although the gate still stands, some primordial seawater has already leaked out and mixed into the sea around us. If this continues, soon it will no longer be able to hold back the primordial sea at all. And if the primordial sea is leaking through, if the gate falls, all of, us, all of Fontaine will fall with it. Yeah, you know what the legends say. If this place falls, then everyone in Fontaine will be turned into puddles in the span of a night. But that's just... too weird! Why would the Fortress of Meripede be built right above a sluice gate for the Primordial Sea? Who built this place anyway? Your expression tells me you think this might be part of a vast, complicated conspiracy. To be honest, you might find the actual answer may be exceedingly boring. It's just that the secret of the Forbidden Zone had been long forgotten by the nation before I rediscovered it with my research. 
There's no single founder of the Fortress of Meripede in any traditional sense. What we know about its history has been left to us by the people who used to live here. When the previous Hydro Archon, Egeria, ruled the land, all convicted criminals from Fontaine were exiled. The people drove the criminals away like a wolf pack chasing away the banished. The criminals received no sympathy of any kind from the people. They were exiled to the desolate seaside, where they experienced only pain, struggle, and the bone-chilling cold. Some of them began to repent and prayed to the Hydro Archon, asking if there was still anything they could do. The Hydro Archon took pity on them and said, You may go guard my secret deep underneath the waves. And so, leaning on the power of the Hydro Archon, they gathered underneath the sea and began to build a fortress. They became a community down there in the deeps, and over the years helped it to grow. As the number of exiles increased, more and more people joined the community. When the first group of exiles died, they left the yet unfinished fortress to their successors. The Hydro Archon continued to lend her support, allowing the fortress and what it stood for to continue growing ever larger. Before long, this dark underwater fortress became the sinner's only home. And with that, the people here stopped referring to the fortress as a prison. They saw themselves as repenting sinners, who would regain their freedom once they had sufficiently redeemed themselves. But as time went on, people also realized that the fortress was a lonely place. Once they had gotten used to life here, they could no longer feel comfortable living in the overworld. Once they had finished serving their sentences, some people left and some others chose to stay. They'd find some idle position and let their withered souls fade away with the ancient secrets of the past. After many, many centuries, few people still remember the reason for the fortress's founding. Now they just see it as an integral pillar of Fontanian society, as the place where criminals deserve to be sent. Now and again, researchers manage to break one law or another and live out their days in the fortress. I learned all this from an elderly historian. Everyone else just thought he'd made it all up. But now you know every part of that history is true. Indeed. It's just as the prophecy says. If this gate fails, then everyone will be dissolved into the sea. Do you believe in prophecies? To be frank, not really. But sadly, that hasn't stopped this prophecy from proving all too accurate. Prophecies are troublesome things. Just hearing one will create the first wave of panic. Seeing signs of it will bring about the second, and actually witnessing it in real time, the third. So, at the Duke of Merope, just what do you plan to do about it? Let's go somewhere else. I want to show you something. You want to show me something? <laughs> this is it. Your Grace, perfect timing. The results from our last round of experiments have... Wait, Jurier, he's not alone! Huh? Loravine and Jurier? No need to panic, you two. I've already told them about our plan. What? After you warned us not to tell a single soul about any of this? I'm skeptical as well. Are you sure they are trustworthy? The results speak for themselves, don't they? These two may already know more than you could ever imagine. All right then, if your grace insists. They seem harmless enough, so I'll trust them for now. Well, how about some reintroductions? This is Jurier, one of the highest ranked researchers from the Fontaine Research Institute. He used to work under Edwin. I uh, trust that you've heard of Edwin? Yeah, we yeah. have. Ed who? He's the one who blew the whole institute sky yeah. high. Everyone knew he was a bit crooked in the head, but you're not a local, so I guess it's possible for you not to have heard of him. Edwin's main areas of research were Archeum and Gravimeters. As his assistant, Jurier is quite familiar with them as well. I hired him to be my technical consultant. You... you want to blow up the Fortress of Merrimee? Ah, what a lovely idea. I'm already imagining it in my head. Gotta admit, I'm tempted as well. Guys, focus! Focus! <laughs> 
That taskmaster over there is Miss Lorbeen, and is also one of my technical consultants. While Jurier used to be Edwin's assistant, she used to be Jurier's assistant. Ooh, are they together? Was that really necessary? See, everyone keeps asking this question. Are you too sure you're not a couple and just using your work as a convenient <laughs> cover? <laughs> I... Your Grace, I am not in a relationship with this man. <laughs> If I dated her, I'd officially be madder than Edwin. Jeez, I forget I said anything then. <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> Whoa, there's another door that goes right up. Your constant amazement makes it seem like the fortress can do anything. She's easily impressed. Like, Hyman really thinks everything's super cool. <laughs> Is this just a normal room? Well, let's spice it up a bit. And here you go. This is... What a huge... ship? An ark? <laughs> this is also a production zone that Paimon's never seen before. What's going on? How much do you know about Fontanian history? Quite a lot, actually. I... not much at all. Yeah, she wasn't paying attention. Well, then maybe you haven't heard the story of ancient Lemuria. To give you a quick rundown, Fontaine used to be ruled by the Lemurian dynasty. I don't know who they were, though, exactly. According to legend, the Lemurian king Remus came to this land after being inspired by divine revelation and found the seer Sibylla, who had taken on the form of a golden bee taking the Golden Bee with him and riding on a huge ship, the Fortuna. He created his nation above the surging waves. He called his nation Lemuria, and used the Fortuna to incessantly search for new tribes and islands, calling on them to join his empire. There's a ship in the story too? Where there's water, there'll be ships. People believe that hope can always be found at the end of a voyage. Do you believe that too? To a point, I think. As you've already seen, I have a whole factory's worth of labor, materials, and technology at my disposal. Certainly can't hurt to give it a try. So the moment I began to speculate that the primordial sea might lie underneath the gate, I also began this project. Were you inspired by the legendary Fortuna? Hmm, maybe. Fontanians need something to hold on to to cope with the impending disaster. This is a plan for the ages. Can't you share your plan with everyone? Were the workers to find out the truth behind this ship, riots would destroy the fortress faster than any catastrophe. As the fortress's administrator, I'd never make such a reckless call. Alright, that's enough talking for now. I'll need another three cups of tea to soothe my throat. Do you have any other questions? Seems like you're good. Come on, I'll take you back. I'll leave you here for now. Oh, uh, thank you so much. No worries, but don't forget, it's up to you whether or not you want to share what you just saw. What you do from here on out will likely affect those three as well. He means that my action now will decide the next steps Linny's group takes. In other words, if I want to tell Linny the truth, I must make him understand that we cannot afford excessive conflict right now. Yeah. Into it for sure. Yeah, we will. Great. I look forward to what happens next. The secret of blue water. Welcome back. Do you want a cup of tea? How can you be so much like Risley, always drinking tea? <clears throat> huh. Actually, now that you mention it, I just remembered something now. 
While I was sedated, I could still barely hear two people talking next to me. They were discussing everything, from the leaves, to the water, and even the teacups themselves. It must have been Risley and Sishui. Yeah, I heard one male voice and one female, so it should have been the two of them. They really were just talking about brewing tea. I really can't make sense of this place. So, Traveler, Paimon, were you able to learn anything from Risley? Yeah, he explained everything! Very well. Then, would you mind checking your answers against my speculations? Oh god, no! No! <laughs> feeling better now, Lenny? Yeah, I took the time to rest, so I'm feeling a lot more relaxed now. Nobody else is around, and Miss Sijuin is also busy with something or other. So let's just talk here. All right, then I'll posit my theories. I asked myself three questions. Firstly, why was Fremenet affected by the primordial seawater? It was because he dove into the sea. My theory is, the long-lost primordial sea is probably very close to the fortress of Meripede. That's our Lenny. Secondly, Risley's attitude changed dramatically during the course of our stay here. He ignored us completely at first, then suddenly roadblocked us. Why? I spent quite a long time thinking about this. If he has been monitoring the Fatui since the very beginning, he probably ignored us at first because he was hoping we could find Master Child for him. What's more, the Fortress of Meripede is not part of Fontaine's court system, nor does it report to Udex Nervilet. Risley is basically the king of a no-man's land. As long as the fortress doesn't do anything about Master Child's disappearance, Father can use it to pressure the Fontaine authorities. And while the two factions are pitted against each other, Risley will be free to move between the parties of interest. If I had to guess, he probably has something that he's working on himself. It's likely related to the secret of the infirmary, but I just can't think of what it could be. The Linny's grasp for the big picture is amazing. You're super smart! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Then finally, there's the last question. If Risley does have a plan, what could it be? All I know for now is that his plan probably has something to do with the changing nature of the seawater. He's even gotten Chloran to help him out. Ah, uh, that can't be the full extent of what he's doing. There's probably a secret passageway behind the block in the infirmary, and there's something big in the fortress that most people here never get to see. He has a bargaining chip, and it could be important enough for Father to deal with him directly. I don't have enough information, so I have no idea what his chip might be. But let me guess. You have the last piece of the puzzle. I can't believe it. Messi will engulf everyone. Just like the prophecy said. Could Risley have wanted to meet Father to figure out a way to deal with this crisis? If you remember, I once mentioned that Father sees the House of the Hearth as her base of operations, and she truly wants to resolve the crisis. But how could Risley have known that? Or perhaps he didn't know, and just wanted to bring Father over to his side? Which could be why he said he just wanted to negotiate. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I understand your concerns as well, Traveler. I'll figure out a way to pass this on to our father. No matter what, we're on your side. The two of you have already aided us far too much. We probably wouldn't be standing here right now if not for you. If you ever need anything else going forward, please come to the House of the Hearth at any time. Though you may not share the sentiment, after all that we've gone through together, the three of us basically see you as family now. You have my gratitude. Thank you for protecting Lenny when it really mattered. And thank you for sharing the secrets of the fortress with us. We didn't think you were going to do it. Uh, why are you being so formal all of a sudden? Don't mention it. We can work together again if necessary. 
Given your strength, you might not need our help at all. But if you are ever in danger, we will try our best to protect you. Aww, the sound of that makes Paimon feel all warm and safe inside. What was that? Uh, Paimon... <laughs> Paimon's hungry. <laughs> oh, uh... You've done so much already. Go get some food. Alright, then we'll catch you guys another time. I feel like I should try to become someone more capable of helping. You're incredibly helpful. Lenny thinks so too. Yeah, you two are always telling me not to push myself, but aren't you just like that as well? Pick this up yet today? Am I going to the cafeteria? It's time for dinner. Welfare meals now being served at the coupon cafeteria. Come on, let's go pick up ours as well. Uh, Traveler and Paimon, uh, over here. Are you here for dinner too, Miss Yijuing? Uh huh. And I'm taking the opportunity to prepare Miss Claran's dinner as well. Huh? You're right. She's actually sitting in the fortress cafeteria. What would you like to eat? Uh, we can choose? Yeah, you can. I've already talked to our chef, Mr. Wolsey. It's all on me today, so you can get whatever you'd like. Then I'll have the tastiest stuff you have to offer. Then I'll get the biggest portion you have to offer. <laughs> me too! Don't forget Paimon! No problem. Just leave it to me. Make sure it's not the purple meat. <laughs> I barely have time to read this. <laughs> so delicious. Why is it sometimes they have a little saying where it says, Oh, next! And other ones are just like... <laughs> Amazing! Free dinners are the absolute best. <laughs> Is this how it feels to be freeloaders? Wait a second, we did do plenty of work after all. Yeah. Feeling full yet? How's the food? Delicious. Exquisite, thank you. Besides the milk, I mean everything was super delicious. Milk? What? <laughs> you know, here in Japan, um, kids don't like milk for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe they get the really non-fat milk, which is actually pretty nasty. Oh, I'm so glad to see you all so happy. Oh, see, the expression on your face just now? But the muscle here just moved, which suggests that you're feeling quite relaxed at the moment. Seedween, do you do this to help your patients or to better understand human beings? A bit of both, I suppose. I'm a melazine, which means I'm very different from human beings. I must know what you're thinking if I want to take good care of you. You're really good at taking care of people. Even though you're so short, you still talk and act like an older sister. Really? You're reminded of an older sister? <laughs> That's great to hear. Oh, and what did you mean back in Risley's office? When you said that you were protecting Linny and his siblings as well? Oh, that. I just asked his grace to look out for those children, especially that diver boy. I was getting a bit worried after hearing that something was wrong with the water. Thankfully, Glorand is very strong and managed to save him in the nick of time. His grace also sealed the pipes after Glorand left, to make sure that Lenny wouldn't impulsively chase after his brother. 
Although the path was blocked, we still stationed some guards there to stop anyone from approaching. They were instructed to only open the door once Miss Clarand had returned. Oh, and I was keeping an eye on Mr. Linney as well. We had to press him, but we couldn't allow him to be in any real danger. You were all super considerate and really thought everything through. <laughs> it's just what we do down here at the fortress. At least this has been his grace's style for as long as he's been the leader. Oh, I really wish Monsieur Nervula would come down here more often too. I feel like he'd like it here, with all the darkness and chaos. Huh? <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. At all. It's hard to imagine you led outside of his office. <laughs> Get a good night's rest, you two. You both worked very hard. Uh, oh, I'm not sure my way. <laughs> Ah, it's you two. How's dinner? It's all right. Miss Sijuin really put in a lot of effort. So we heard that Risley invited you to come down to help, and you saved Fremenay too! You sure work super fast! Oh, it was child's play. Still, Paimon didn't know even Champion Duelists could take on side jobs. Oh, and why aren't you eating with Sijuin and the Duke? Won't you get bored eating by yourself? Miss Sijuin was with you. And the Duke has business of his own. Hmm. Actually, didn't Navia say that you went out for dinner with her as well? Yeah. First time in a long time. First time in a long time? So you mean you've gone out to dinner with her in the past? In the past, yes. <clears throat> you seem to be enjoying yourselves here. All things new that. This is technically a work trip for us too. <laughs> things will be getting messy at the fortress soon. Don't run around unnecessarily. Soon? Why do you say that? See you tomorrow, oh, start. So much has happened. Parma just feels absolutely exhausted now that she's finally relaxed. <sighs> I'm un super sleepy. Are you sleepy too? Yeah, I'm also getting there. She really immediately fell asleep. <laughs> mm, delicious. I'm on one seconds for free. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> out of my way! Get out of my way! What happened? Why is everyone running? No idea, but something must have happened. Stop asking! Uh-huh. Who's yelling? Paimon still wants to sleep. What's that sound? Paimon, wake up. We need to go and see what's going on. What happened? 
happened? Why is everyone running around? Uh, hey, what are you doing? There's no time to explain, mate. Goodbye. Uh, hey, wait! What's wrong with these people? They won't even talk to us. They're here! Yeah. There you are! Oh, thank goodness! Crystal and Lavaroon, do you know what happened here? We came here especially to inform you. Something seems to have gone terribly wrong just now. His Grace is telling everyone to evacuate and get out of here. Lavaroon was saying you two are new here and you don't have many friends, so you might slip through the cracks. Haven't you heard all the stories like that? An evacuation is successfully completed. Yet you only find out once you do a head count that one or two people are missing. Wait, weren't you the one who brought that up? Why is it suddenly my idea? Hey, shut up! Why are you arguing a time okay, like this? Okay, whatever. The point is, you should come with us. You said his grace said to evacuate outwards? Yeah, he said to get as far away as possible, upwards and outwards. Then that means whatever happened must have happened down below. Oh no. Isn't that gate at the very bottom? Yeah, it's not very good. Oh no, it can't be that thing! Whoa, wait, what? What? Hey, where are you going? We have to go by the Duke! You two just go and get out! Go on without us! Hey, hey! Be careful! We don't know what it is to be careful. They're here. Oh, just like I said. What happened? Huh? If you know what's gonna happen, why are you just standing there? Not like you can prevent it from happening. You're just in time. Hmm? But be ready to run. Won't hold it for long. Find Nuvilet. Tell him the defenses are about to collapse. Then what will happen to you? Until he arrives, we're the last line of defense. The gate. How long do you think it'll hold? That depends on us. Traveler, I need you to head to the Opera House immediately. Farina will soon be meeting with the Knave there. You must protect Farina, and make sure she doesn't spend too much time alone with her. 
Okay, you can explain everything else to me later. Will do. You have my sincerest gratitude. <laughs> I'm finally outside of prison. Yay! <laughs> Though, if I'm gonna go against the knave, I'm not sure if I want to use this part again. <laughs> also, what power does she have? I have no idea. Oh. Look! There are a ton of Batillion Palain Armonia people over there! The knave is probably here already. We need to hurry! Are you two the Traveler in Paimon? Monsieur Nervalet has left instructions. Please, follow me. Though I'm sure he's already explained, this should be a mostly cordial conversation unlikely to give rise to violence. But it would be most appreciated if you could protect Lady Farina to the best of your abilities. I will do my best. Your hero oh, is here. So you two are the honored guests Miss Farina mentioned. Of course, of course. How could they not attend a meeting such as this? I must always have two or more guests at my dessert table. Otherwise, the occasion would be too lonely and unbecoming of my station. It is my pleasure to make your acquaintance, traveler. I have heard much of your accomplishments. I... I am the Knave, one of the eleven Fatui Harbingers. So this is the Knave, the head of the House of the Heart, and the Linny sibling's father. She certainly does seem, does not seem easy to deal with. <laughs> Greetings, it's a pleasure to meet you too. To meet you too. <laughs> I've already prepared seats for you. Come, sit beside me. Perhaps you two are unaware of how Miss Farina and I do things. You see, we actually recently agreed to get together for tea when we had the time. See this? This is a limited type of confectionery that Miss Farina simply adores. There are only 16 slices sold every day. Here, why don't you and Paimon have a taste? She seems friendly enough, but that can't be all there is to her. The knave is a force to be reckoned with. I should be very cautious under. Yeah, I don't know about eating that food. Traveler, what do you think of this cake? Uh, it's pretty good. Quite tasty. And I think Paimon agrees, too. Let's see what she says. That's good to hear. <laughs> so what Child said was on the mark after all. You do share a taste in desserts with Farina and I. I certainly do. <laughs> Wit. How should I have no reason to have said something like that? Yeah, I know. It seems kind of weird. <sighs> I wonder how he's doing nowadays. You must have heard, right? He's suddenly gone missing. I'm really worried about his safety, you know. Here's to hoping that he's an excellent swimmer. I have faith in his abilities. Uh, since we're talking about him, I feel like I should add something. His martial prowess really looked... Certainly pretty impressive, yeah. Farina looks quite nervous. There must be some kind of bad blood between her and Nave. Oh, so you're also familiar with his aptitude for fighting, Miss Farina. Oh, right. I almost forgot. Child was subdued by Udex Nuvillette right in front of you. Against ordinary people, my colleague would never be on the back foot. But alas... He just never imagined he'd run into such a person. Hmm. I must express my admiration for Monsieur Nuvillette. I managed to find a few leads on his whereabouts. Hmm. Coming from you, that's not surprising at all. Uh, but I thought you would be happier to hear the news. 
Of course, but it's still a bit of a shame. You see, I would have been far happier had I received this news somewhat earlier. As you well know, a long time has passed since Child disappeared. Uh... I... Well, in any case, there's no need to worry. We know for sure that Child is still alive. Oh. And just how do you know that? Because... Uh... Because we found evidence that proved he left the Fortress of Merdeed! And where did he go after leaving the Fortress? Oh no, Paimon's demon just left us wide open. The fortress of Meripede lies deep beneath the waves. Unless he pranced right out of the main gate, he must have had to swim for it. Do you have any proof that he surfaced safely? We do not. But there was also no evidence that he's been injured or killed. Oh, that is good news at least. His sister Tonya sent a letter to Fontaine not too long ago. Since he was unfortunately unavailable, I picked it up on his behalf. Do you have any idea how he usually writes back to his family? Dear Tonya, your letter made me feel like we were still enjoying our time in Snezhnaya together. I'm currently admiring the scenery on the streets in front of the Opera House. Is it something like that? She's turning up the pressure. I'm not sure if I'd be able to convince her, but I can at least try to distract her from Verena. Uh, that sounds good to me, yes. All letters tend to follow the same few formats anyway, right? As long as the contents are accurate, it doesn't matter so much how it's written or how it's worded. Uh, huh? Uh, hold on. The water in the teacup is shaking. Hmm. I suppose this is also a sign of things to come, Miss Farina. Huh? Uh, I don't quite understand what you're trying to say. Have we entered into the next stage of the prophecy? My thanks to you both. I will take it from here. Hmm? Sure you don't need a hand? Quite sure. Wow. So, what's your secret, huh? Uh, let me guess. Nah, who knows. Maybe it's just your sense of responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Day may come when the prophecy is fulfilled and the waters burst forth, but it is not this day. This ancient power could easily obliterate an entire race. A tsunami of fury would unleash endless catastrophe. Forgive me for overruling it. All right. Seems like the problem inside has been suppressed. Let me guess. We're safe for now. <laughs> Indeed. But only for now. I win this bet. You owe me a present. 
<sighs> Very well. It was indeed just as you said. You made a bet? We made a bet on the size of your entourage. Cloran thought you wouldn't come down by yourself. I figured you would have at least brought a few people along for appearance's sake. It appears I underestimated just how confidential the mission was. Shouldn't you have gotten used to confidential missions by now? That's just how the courts operate. So what gift must the loser give? T. Hmm. He already has tons of tea in his office. I'm thinking about a set of legal codices. That wouldn't happen to be a dig at my lack of legal awareness, would it? <laughs> well, I'm sure His Grace doesn't consider the fortress to be outside the law. I was under the impression the residents of a place like this would be uninterested in the legal codices. <sighs> that was obviously a joke. Uh, anyway, you've still got some unfinished business to attend to in the overworld, correct? No need to stay here if you have a pressing matter. We all know you can't leave Palais Mimonia for long. Thank you. I hope everything went smoothly with the Fatui Harbinger. I must say, we've spent long enough playing house. Miss Farina, as the Hydro Archon, I am sure you understand the exact meaning of the phenomenon we just witnessed. Or should I say, that's what I originally thought. But looking at your expression, was I wrong? And you haven't a clue? What are you trying to say? That you're not the real Hydro Archon! Or there's two of you. Which At would this still point, I don't be. think there's any more need to speak as diplomatic representatives. Allow me to speak to you now as just a Fontanian. You know the prophecy by heart, and also that every part of it is being proven true. Yet, here you are, relaxing, drinking tea, and eating desserts as if it's all nothing more than a few stray bugs in your garden. Do you really think that's acceptable? The prophecy's hanging above our necks like a guillotine. Every faction is looking for a way to either avert the disaster or save their own. Even the orphans of the House of the Heart have devoted everything to saving their homeland. But you? It beggars belief just how nonchalant and carefree you have been. From the very beginning, you, the god Fosalor, you have utterly failed to take action. You're wrong. I've never ignored the prophecy, nor have I just been passing the time in self-indulgence. Retract your accusation and stop doubting the wisdom of the gods with such absurd conjectures! I am not alone in my doubts, you know. All the children of Fontaine may be harboring the exact same thoughts right now. Oh, great Hydro Archon. How are you going to save them? Save us? How are the people you've sworn to protect supposed to survive in a land that will soon disappear beneath the waves? I have my ways. And I've been working on them for all this time. Even if you look down upon me, you have no right to judge me! Fontaine will be saved. Even... even if I still cannot see the true future right now. As long as I continue on as I am, I will be able to hold my head up high! Farina's not acting like her usual self. She's actually seriously refuting the knave's accusations. She means what she says. She's not putting on a front. Then I ask you, Miss Farina, just what have you been working on? Where can we see it, and what is it doing to help? I... So, was that all a lie, or can she really not tell us? She was so full of conviction and confidence just now, now she's deflated like a pop balloon. My machinations 
are just like the prophecy itself. They will only reveal themselves at the fated time. It is just that beings like yourselves are unable to perceive them as of yet. Mm, I see. As a god, the proof of your labor always lies beyond prying mortal eyes. Allow me to be so bold as to ask another way. Would it be possible for you to tell us the parts of your plan that are not confidential? Such as, your emergency response plan for the impending disaster? Uh, an emergency response plan? Oh, that look in your eyes. Have you not even prepared one of those? The, the emergency response plan is also strictly confidential. Then allow me to jog your memory. Oh, she's fine. Miss Farina, what is the purpose of your oratrice mechanique d'analyse cardinal? And what do you plan to do with the massive amounts of indemnidium that has accumulated over the years? The oratrice? It, it's just like it appears to be. Hmm. So you also have no idea. If I'm not mistaken, Someone's using it to prepare for something. But unfortunately, it would seem that someone is not you, Miss Farina. I first caught wind of this when Linny tried to investigate the Oratrice in the Opera House. You see, even just getting close to the core contaminated him with an extremely large amount of indemnidium. What do you mean contaminated, though? But even if that had nothing to do with you, then what could you possibly be working on, oh great Hydro Archon? Oh, right. I almost forgot. Eudex Nouvellet is not at the tea party with us today. Miss Farina, I suppose you must have ordered him away to take care of some troublesome business. Ah, uh, yeah, yes, that's exactly right. Please keep it a secret for me. Of course I will. Although, I must say, Miss Farina, you seem quite insecure without the Udax by your side. Oh, very well. Let's stop that conversation here. There are still a few slices of cake left, so please, help yourselves, everyone. These aren't topics I can speak about. I don't even know what Nuvalet's task was. If I had to guess, he probably went down to deal with the surging primordial sea, but can he really deal with it all by himself? And is Farina being truthful or not? Traveler, I heard that you were recently commissioned to handle a few matters on behalf of the Udex. Why don't you take an extra slice of cake? Those who work hard deserve gratitude and praise. You too, Paimon. Uh, thank you! Oh, I'm on super full. That cake was great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it's on my tea table, it must be of the highest quality. Uh, yes, and we must thank the knave for bringing these over as well. You're welcome. I'm sure the cake also felt greatly honored to be featured at Miss Farina's table. And I was merely catering to Miss Farina's tastes, seeking a chance to chat over tea. Hmm, it is getting late. Why don't we call it a day? There are still a few matters that I need to take care of, so I must take my leave now. Very well. We'll end it here. Mind seeing me off, Traveler. We could use the opportunity to discuss child before I must be on my way. Of uh, course. Paimon's coming too! <sighs> the tea party turned out to be even more difficult than I'd imagined. Uh, uh, <laughs> why are you looking at me like that? Is something the matter? If there's nothing urgent, then I shall be retiring for now.
Bye, Farina. Stay safe. I'm glad that you were willing to come with me. Of course, child was just an excuse. I have no interest in your dealings with him. That's a time I've got! What do you want to say? You lent your aid to the children of the House of the Hearth. As their father. I would like to express my gratitude. There's no need. I don't think that's what you wanted to talk about. Do I look like an irresponsible father to you? <laughs> The House of the Hearth is very important to me. You should know that I care deeply about my children. Was there nothing else you wanted to say? That was all. Formal topics should be discussed in formal settings, and informal topics in informal settings. I know you just returned from the Fortress of Meripede. Relax. I have no intention of trying to get anything out of you. Linny, Lynette, and Fremine are still there. And I trust their judgment and abilities. They've all been working very hard and have always done all they can to fight back against anyone who tried to stop them. Especially Lenny. You mean Ridesley. He's a tricky one to deal with. Hmm. It's unfortunate that Lenny's so eager to prove himself that he can't learn to rely on others. Including me. By the way... And you can just consider this a bit of idle gossip, but what's your impression of Farina? You are outside of our disputes, and the freest person in all of Fontaine, able to move around most easily. Allow me to share my perspective with you. And that's everything that happened during the trial. Master Child was declared guilty, and immediately transported to the Fortress of Meropede. Oh, I didn't know that. Didn't he say he was coming here on vacation? Does he not feel an ounce of shame for all the trouble he has caused? Uh, I... I... Forget it. He did give us an opportunity. I will be meeting someone shortly. Do you require help with any preparations? No need. I will take care of it myself. I need to meet with Farina, the Hydro Archon. She is at the heart of Fontaine. But what's fascinating about her is that she often seems more like a celebrity than a working Archon. Exactly. False front. Oh, come over here, you little critter, you. <laughs> is that her? <laughs> <laughs> oh, cute. Well, you dare to run from me? Stop right this instant! Well. <laughs> My goal is just to discover the location of the Gnosis. But I didn't expect the chance to approach Farina to be handed to me on a silver platter. This is so easy, it's actually making me a bit suspicious. Anything left unguarded is usually just bait. But no one will blame someone for taking the bait. After all, from the moment it was attached to the hook, the bait is meant to be sacrificed. <laughs> it's just as I guessed in the second before I struck. The Hydronosis is not currently held by the Archon. In fact, this Archon doesn't seem like a god at all. And I sense that she's under some kind of curse. Who are you? What are you trying to do? Please, don't kill me! I'm begging you, please! The fear in her pupils is genuine, so perhaps she's not bait after all. Either way, targeting her has lost all meaning. Hmm. 
I left the scene with ease. Nobody came looking for me, and nobody could serve as a witness to my near assassination of Fosalor. I suspect even Farina dares not mention this incident to anyone. <coughs> not long after, my informants confirmed what I had guessed. After returning to her quarters, Farina quietly cried alone. She was so scared that she could not sleep that night, nor could she even bring herself to eat her cake. There's no doubt that there's something wrong with her. I began to entertain the possibility that she is not the true Hydro Archon. Perhaps Udex Nuvillette is actually the genuine article. I have to find the Gnosis. If the Nuvillette hypothesis is correct, he is probably in possession of it. Alternatively, it might have been hidden in a place that's hard for ordinary people to access. Yes, Father. My dear children, please speak. News from the Fortress of Meripede. Master... Master Child has gone missing. On top of that, the contacts and guards we bribed at the Fortress have all gone quiet as well. Probably the handiwork of that Ridesley. I'm afraid so. This is a good opportunity. The value of a Harbinger is much higher than most would imagine. We now have an excuse to exert diplomatic pressure on the Fontaine authorities. Set up a meeting for me. I would like to meet the Hydro Archon and Udex Nuvillette. Oh, and I have an additional mission for you three. Yes, Father. Tartaglia's disappearance was not a part of my plan, but I can use it to make a breakthrough. With this as my excuse, I can ask for an official audience and continue my investigation of Farina and Udex Nuvillette. The initiative belongs to the House of the Hearth. My wish to investigate the Fortress of Meripede will be a front. Linny and his group will be responsible for the actual intelligence gathering. You should know the rest. Lenny's group is quite close to you, so they wouldn't have hidden anything from you. Y you attacked the Hydro Archon? It wouldn't mean anything, even if you shouted it from the rooftops. After all, even Farina herself is still pretending that nothing of that sort ever happened. I've now had two chances to enjoy tea with Farina. I have to say, the leadership of Fontaine is even more inscrutable than I had imagined. I once surmised that Udex Nuvillette must be the Hydro Archon. But now, that doesn't seem right to me either. How did you come to that conclusion? I am a servant of Her Majesty the Tsaritsa. Over my years of service, I've learned how a real Archon conducts and carries themselves. Whether Udex Nuvillette or Farina, neither fits the bill. It's hard to imagine either of them as the Archon. I don't know. I disagree. Of course. That is all just how I feel. Gut feelings often do not require justification. Although I still think it's possible that there could be two Farinas. It is, however, quite amusing to me that after all my years working in intelligence gathering, I've come to realize I am at a complete loss regarding the identity of the god of the land of my birth. Don't you think Fontaine is quite intriguing? A catastrophe looms, yet many secrets have yet to rise to the surface. <sighs> it looks like Fontanians will have no choice but to save themselves. Ultimately, though, one must survive in order to do anything else. Should the need arise, I would be happy to cooperate with you. You don't need to commit to anything right now, of course. I have a feeling that the situation will continue to evolve. And as your name is often connected with noble deeds, I'm sure we will work together someday. Nivellet? He certainly returned quickly. You must want to catch up with each other, so I'll leave you to him. 
with it really quickly because you talked a lot and you ate a lot of cake. So. For now, yes. But this issue will prove quite thorny in the long term. I am concerned that sooner or later the prophesized events will occur. Thank you for protecting Farina. May we ask what happened down there? Hmm. To put it simply, I used my power to force back the Primordial Sea and reseal the Sluice Gate. As for what happened on our side? Hmm. So as expected, the knave has turned up the pressure on Farina. She's trying to feel her out, though I'm still unsure as to her motives. Can I ask you some questions? Permission granted. You have enough power to force back the Primordial Sea. Does this mean you have some deeper connection with the Hydro Archon? Whoa. It can't be that you're the real Hydro Archon, right? But that's just a speculation on our part, though. You can't tell us? Then... Then that's okay. We can talk about something else. We won't try to force you. <laughs> you guys in Fontaine are super strange. If by the phrase, you guys, you are referring to Farina and I, then although I'm not sure just what you are trying to imply, I must clarify that I do not share her positions on a multitude of topics. Where did what did you sense in the fortress of Mirapi? <laughs> you managed to protect the, those that need to be defended? I believe so. The fortress has a long and complex history. It has seen much grief and suffering. And now, another catastrophe will soon be upon us. I mourn this turn of events. Huh? Why is it raining all of a sudden? <gasps> Clear sky suddenly filled with dark cloud. The rain became heavier. Light rain soon growing to a downpour. And just moments before, Newlet has just mentioned his sense of grief. Looking back to that legend and what Fremene said, it said that a dragon of water once resided in Fontaine. Every time it weeps, the skies will cloud up and pour out rain. Wait, Newlet, you can't be. You may be closer to the truth than you think. He's a dragon sovereign. 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 sovereign uh, I'm not really gonna say this one. A watcher. The dragon of. Uh, what? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Please do not be so surprised. <sighs> Farina? My apologies. We were just guessing randomly. We didn't guess right, did we? You're not actually the Dragon Sovereign of Water, right? Sovereign. Well, if you don't want to confirm or deny... <sighs> you guessed correctly. I sincerely hope you'll be able to keep this a secret for me. Uh, right, of course. We'll definitely help you keep it a secret. There's... Still something Paimon wants to ask you, though. Please, go ahead. Well, if you are the Dragon Sovereign of Water, and you were able to force back the Primordial Sea from the fortress, then since Fontaine's prophecy is all about seawater, couldn't you just use your power to solve the crisis? None of the currently living Dragon Sovereigns in the world, myself included, possess our full Dragonhood. They say that when the first usurper arrived on Tivat, they seized a part of the dragon's power. Today, that stolen power is the basis of the Archon's authorities. There are seven elemental Archons and seven matching dragon sovereigns. The dragon sovereign of water who lived through that era perished a long time ago. As their successor, I know far less of that part of our ancient history. In any case, I believe I will not be able to do much 
unless the Archon disappears and returns their elemental authority to me. Given the status quo, however, I would recommend finding another way to deal with the prophecy. Oh, so even you can't solve it. I still have some urgent matters to attend to at my office. If you have any more questions regarding ancient history, you are welcome to discuss them with me at a later time. Ah, uh, please go right ahead. There's a place that Paimon wants to go to. Traveler, why don't we pay another visit to the Fortress of Meripede? Paimon is a little worried. Must we? Sure. You leave me with that. <laughs> we'll see you another time. I'm gonna talk to Marina. Take care. <laughs> It's sunny over here. <laughs> and it's sunny over here now. Now guess, what suit will this next cart be? Uh... A bear teeth cat? Well, well, look who it is. Traveler, Paimon! Huh. Hello, everyone. Looks like you're recovering nicely, Fremine. Mm-hmm. Thanks to everyone's support. Oh, right. I... I managed to work up the courage to thank Miss Clorand in person. Whoa, how did she react? Uh, she told me that it was nothing. It was as if saving a life wasn't a big deal to her at all. She also told me not to worry about it. She didn't want to stress you out, that's all. She's right, and it's best not to dwell on it. Yeah. Okay, but check this out. We went back to the Opera House, and we met the Knave. You met Father? Did she say anything to you? She said a few things that were... uh... a bit hard to understand. And also that she's looking forward to working with us in the future. It was a little surprising. Her attitude towards you is even better than what we'd imagined. <laughs> That's fantastic. You should believe her. She has her own way of doing things, and she'll do everything in her power to help those she considers close, which now might also include you. I don't know about that. Mm-hmm. Father is very capable, and also trustworthy. I don't know about that either. Oh, Paimon well, just remembered that she thought Linny was a bit too proud as well. She said that you should learn how to rely on others sometimes. Yeah, Linny. <laughs> uh, got it. <laughs> huh. That does sound like something that father would say. Hey! <laughs> Are you going to stay here for the next few days? No, I don't want to. Looks like it, yeah! What? No! Excellent! I will host a tea party. For real? Then Papa wants another serving of cake! Another implies that you were already served some delicious cake while you were up there. Hmm, 
How lovely. Well, next time, you're going to have tea and snacks with us. We should start preparing that tea party. Oh, that's a great idea. I'm all for it. I'll help you set it up. The beds are way too big. What are you thinking? <laughs> okay. Um, I don't think the other ones. Not sure. No, it's up there. Oh dear. Well, I bought it. <laughs> Maybe down below? Hey, new best buddies. <laughs> Ed, you, you guys are back. Well, oh, you too. You guys didn't get caught and thrown back down here, right? Huh? No, not at all. Ah, and here I thought you'd managed to escape from jail during all the commotion. I'd held you up as legendary jailbreakers, but now you're telling me you just never left. <laughs> We're sorry, but we just I had some business to take care of. All right, all right. There's no need to get caught up in the details. We're just relieved to see him. He was super worried about you, you know. <laughs> hey, it wasn't just me. Weren't you super worried as well? Uh, something like that, yeah. I was also transferred to work in the kitchen a few days ago. I can still hear Quisto mumbling to the carrots. Are those two all right? Do you think they made it out alive? Whenever he'd say that, I'd tell him I'm sure they're fine. Wherever they are, they're kicking back with drinks in hand, enjoying the lovely scenery. Hey, there's nothing wrong with worrying about your prison pals, is there? I mean, considering how they always love listening to all my gossip. These two, they sure are a lot warmer and friendlier than when Paimon first met them. I'm sure the well-filled mirrors must have just skyrocketed in quality recently. <laughs> oh, well, if you say so. I'll be watching you to make sure you finish every last bite. Well, it looked like it was up this way, but maybe not. No, it's not. Where's his tea? Huh? Where's his tea? These are just books. <laughs> ah! Oops, 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 oops. Uh. Now it's telling me to go out this way. Oh, that's the wrong thing. <laughs> get down, get down. <laughs> Where am I supposed to go? Mm-hmm. 
Did either of you get hurt? Don't worry, we're both doing great. We are fine, but what about you guys? It was such a huge mess, how bad was it? A few people sustained superficial injuries, but that's about the extent of the damage. Monsieur Nervulet paid us a visit. It was all thanks to him that we managed to suppress the crisis for the time being. Of course, we must also thank you for the help you provided. How did Nervulet know that he was needed here? Monsieur Nervulet has strong resonance with the hydro element. When the water level rises, he can feel the waves produced. I ran into the bombshell bros while bandaging the injuries of the wounded. They were mumbling the whole time about how you just ran down without a word. I'm so relieved to see that you're both alright. If you're not too pressed for time, please stay with us a few more days. Just let me know if you get a craving for any particular dish, so I can have Mr. Wolsey get your meals prepared. Oh, and please feel free to visit the infirmary for a break at any time. I'd like to take the opportunity to spend some more time observing your facial muscles as well. Your happy smiles are quite contagious, you know. They're so memorable, and I've missed them immensely while you were gone. Okay, I'm looking for the breadcrumbs. Where are the breadcrumbs? So it's higher. Look, I went up there. And not there. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Is this like, was I supposed to go here last? <laughs> See, and now I, I exit. And it's like, okay, now it's telling me it's lower. Oh, there's the breadcrumbs. Okay, well, I was thinking about coming down this way, but I'm like, eh, well, whatever. Jurier? Miss Sijuin told me you still haven't eaten. Yeah, I was working on something, so I forgot. Uh, that's no excuse for... Huh? What's you two? Hello there. It's been quite the mess here recently. How have you been? Fine, thanks. And you! Are you still taking the secret passageway from the infirmary to work on the ship? Yep. That is still top secret, though. So don't say a word to anyone. It can be a bit annoying when there are lots of people in the infirmary, but I still prefer taking that route over the one from the Duke's office. I mean, the infirmary does make it easier for you to slack off. Shoot. Oh yeah? Then why are you also here so much? You two really are just using your jobs as a cover for your relationship, aren't you? Well, the one girl did blame him for her heart palpitations. <laughs> Not at all! <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> Figured this out. My eyes deceive me, or did I just see two inmates come back after making it to the surface? Some strange winds blowing of late. <laughs> we wanted to see how the fortress is doing. Is everything still all right? We're fine, for the most part. Nervalette came down and took care of the worst of it. If that's the case, why don't you just ask him to stay here? Oh, yeah, what a brilliant plan. 
Let's go convince the Udex himself to exchange the Quartz of Fontaine for a puddle of water in the middle of nowhere. I don't think it's going to work. He came here in a hurry and left without even stopping for a cup of tea. He did remember to take Miss Sijuin's gift with him, though. He sure sounds super busy. Miss Cloran has left as well. She also took her gift from Miss Sijuin. Were the gifts milkshakes? Nervalette got the milkshake. Cloran received lipstick instead. Odd. Uh, those aren't even remotely alike. Well, it's Nervalette's own fault for making Sijuin worried about his health by working so much. But besides that, our head nurse is still pretty fond of picking out beauty products for the ladies. Oh, and I have some gifts here for you as well. Are these from Sijuin too? Nope. They're from yours truly. You've already wrapped up your work at the fortress, so you can return to the surface at any time. You haven't yet served your full prison term, however, so you may continue to use your cell until your term is up. For real? Then we can stay here for a really long time? Is food still covered? You may access the cafeteria for free. Hooray! Just remember to come complete your paperwork once it's time for your release. But I don't want to. <laughs> your file can't be closed until we've completed your paperwork. So don't forget to come find me again when you're done serving your sentence. We're no longer prisoners, though, so it really doesn't feel the same. It feels like a huge weight is off our shoulders. It feels like we, like, we gained our freedom. Mm -hmm. Being free sure feels pretty special now. Paimon, is there something you'd like to say? Huh? How do you know? Because you usually just immediately fall asleep. Hey, that's not true! All right. Okay, I just wanted to say that we really are an amazing duo after all. It's like, we've now gone to so many places together and become friends with so many people. We've never stopped traveling or stopped meeting new friends. There are so many bad things in the world and we're just two people, but we've still been solving problems no matter where we go. Isn't that pretty cool? With the best adventures ever. You're counting Paimon today? Aren't you the only adventurer here? Being a guy counts too. Then let's ask Catherine to give Paimon an adventurer handbook as well. Paimon will also be an adventurer from today forward. Ah, I just got thoughts making Paimon giddy. Oh, oh, Paimon's gonna crash, so you sleep soon too. The last time we fell asleep here, we woke up to a whole mess outside ourselves. The primordial seawater nearly rose up. That was so scary. We should be safe now, right? We'll be fine. Don't worry, Paimon. Alright then. Good night to you, Traveler. Good night to you, Paimon. <laughs> 